Uh, hi everyone. Um, that was a long introduction. Sorry about that. I didn't realise it was uh, so extensive. Um, uh, well, good afternoon. We're all tired. I know I'm shattered actually. Um, the, uh, I just wanted to start off by saying thank you to the organising committee for inviting us to uh, present today. Um, I uh, originally, um, well, originally yesterday arrived from Sheffield in the UK. So. There's a challenge for you, Oliver. <laughs> I, think, I think I beat you by about 200 miles. Um, uh, so I'm going to talk to you today about this um, neck orthosis. This is, uh, I've got a prototype here, which I'm happy to hand around um, shortly, but I did want to show you a few things with it first. Um, before I do that, though, um, I just wanted to... Uh, where I come from. Sheffield Hanley University's Art and Design Research Centre. This project was part of a unit within that university called the Lab for Living. And the Lab for Living is set up specifically to develop and integrate projects that involve design and health. Um, up until about three years ago, the only time I ever heard the words, uh, the, 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 the letters MND together, it was just like on the news, bits of radio, whatever. I, hadn't, I knew nothing about it. And I still don't know that much, so I hope you forgive me if I use some of the wrong terminology uh, in what I tell you. But as a designer, we're always learning new stuff about new specialist areas. Um, so, yeah, Head Up. The project is uh, actually called Head Up. That's the funded project. Um, we note that there's another project called Heads Up, which was talked about earlier on. Um, the product itself is called the Sheffield Support Snood. Um, the reason it's called that I won't go into, but it's from Sheffield. And I, is everyone familiar with the term snood? Yeah. Um, and the uh, I just want to talk briefly about the uh, the background, so the, some of the development story that's behind this, and some of the key points in the project. The thing, uh, the two things um, I do want to say on this slide is that it is a really collaborative project in the theme of this uh, conference, uh, participation. In design, we call it co-research co and co-design. So we're bringing in users, and I'll talk about that briefly, um, and some of the key points in the project. The other thing I want to point out is that in the, um, in the write-up in the document you've got, some of these names are missing, and that's my fault. We've got a lot of partners. Um, the key partners are Citran, based in Sheffield. Um, uh, that's Dr. Christopher McDermott, who is um, the, the lead on this project. He's a neurologist. Dr. Nicola Heron, um, Joe Langley, and Andrew Stanton, who are part of my team. Um, so, the head up. What, we, what we're doing here is we're saying that as uh, in motor neuron disease, um, as the muscles uh, lose mass and become weaker, that the head, in, as the condition as the disease progresses, the head can drop, can drop down. Um, this lady was actually a photo taken by Chris McDermott early on um, in uh, in the study, and uh, she was actually being asked to look at the camera, um, and that's as much as she could get her head up to look at the camera. So, um, one of the first things we were considering is. You know how much does a head weigh? We, you know, we have to learn about how the, the sort of human mechanics. Um, I don't know if you have that brand of sugar um, here, um, but uh, it was, I was amazed. Five kilograms, five, uh, full, up to you know around five kilograms, the mass of the head. Um, so it's an enormous weight for our muscles to be bearing. Um, and current provision for these kinds of products, and I've heard just today that um, a lot of the occupational therapists who are also involved in this uh, project that are here today do have uh, issues with the current, current provision for neck orthosis. Um, on the one end of the scale, you have very soft collars and some inflatable products, um, which don't offer much support, but a bit of sort of comfort, some support. And at the other end of the scale, you've got products that are designed for things like uh, head trauma. You've got you know, full head and neck immobilization. And when these products are prescribed, that we've, we, in our interviews and sessions, we found that the users weren't, um, they weren't taking to these. There was a lot of non-compliance because they, they're not designed for the job. Um, so we were asking what's in the middle. You know, is there something in the middle? Is there something that can provide support with movement, which is rigid enough to, uh, to hold the head up? 
um, and, um, and, and, and comfortable and not big and bulky and medical. So the, our aims were to uh, allow degrees of movement while still supporting the head and maximise comfort and aesthetics. And there's something I must say about aesthetics at the end, especially if I pass this around. Um, so um, we, this is way before the project started. We, we, we scoped out a project which had these key points in it. The green dots, uh, sorry, the, the, the blue dots there is what we call our expert user panel. And in the course of this project, we had probably, I reckon, about up to about 20, 20 people uh, diagnosed with MND at different stages of disease progression joining, come into the project, and we'd actually, we'd actually meet and talk for a couple of hours every morning. Morning seemed to suit them better, um, all the way through that first year of the project. Uh, the blue dots, sorry, the green dots represent our expert um, uh, carers, OTs, um, and cl uh, clinical expertise. So we scope this whole project out. What's not shown on there very clearly is the work package three, which is the furthest bracket along, which is the user evaluation um, uh, phase. So basically we're designing something with people, we're making it in different iterations, and then we're putting it through a formal evaluation process. Um, but there's something that had to happen before that, um, and it's something which increasingly proves to be more and more successful, is right at the beginning, before, the, before the, that project, we get design in really early, and that helps us to scope out and understand what is actually going to be needed. I see proposals, funded projects all the time that don't, um, haven't really talked to a designer before they start to win the money um, to, to do something. Um, so those sessions gave us really early, really, really early ideas. Um, you know, rough sketches were produced and um, so there's quite a lot of work at the front end. Actually, during the sessions, um, the, uh, the top line of photographs are some of the workshops that we, that we ran. The bottom line is all the mad inventions that the designers and the design team actually came up with. We would never expect people to be wearing and putting on kinds of these things, but it's a kind of a trick in design to be able to, to, uh, to benchmark everything. We've got so many different disciplines involved to benchmark everything by making something, putting it in front of them and saying, is this what you mean? What if we did this? And it gives people an opportunity to go, no, that's complete rubbish. What I meant was something else, which is quite a hard thing to uh, communicate just verbally. So we have a row, of, um, a row of iterative prototypes. And out of that came a number of, sort of shortlisted concepts for, for, for products. Um, I wish I could talk for longer, but I know um, time is tight. Um, different concepts that work in different ways. And we, then we'd manifest those, put them back into the workshops, as I said. One of the, just one quick example of that is someone said, uh, support with movement. And we said, well, what does that actually mean? So we made something to try and find out what that means. Because if you have support, by virtue of the fact you have support, you, you're kind of in a way you're taking movement away. Um, so we built this Frankenstein rig, uh, which we, um, one, of the, one of the things that rig did is it took all movement in this direction completely away and just allowed someone to, to move their head from side to side. Um, and again, we would never expect anyone to wear that, but we made it to try and understand the problem. Um, through that process, the thing which won over was this, that's the very first prototype. It's a soft, it's a soft collar, which has a Velcro or hook and loop to avoid the branding uh, problems. Uh, a soft collar which is shaped. Now this is four-way stretch neoprene. And it's shaped in such a way that it will fit a wide... We're never going to fit everyone. Um, and there are a few different sizes of this being produced. in a short version. Um, Four-way stretch. So that Velcro's um, to the wearer around that way. And then what happens is we developed a number of, um, number of these support elements. And inside here is a polypropylene strip. It's graded in a particular way to offer different types of support. And there are different shapes and sizes of these, which then um, attach a in a particular, particular way. So that Z-shaped one, for example, comes up under here. Um, I'll pass that around. I wanted to just describe that before, you, uh, uh, before I handed it out. But I'd be happy for you to look at that. I'm sorry it's screwed up. Um, so that design won out uh, head and shoulders above the rest. But we had to, um, 
<laughs> we, just to get to that very, very simple product, there was many, very many steps that we had to go through. Um, so uh, starting off with a sort of sketch work and talking to people, trying out different ways. One of the first things you could, like, have you heard of hair scrunchies? They're like a piece of foam with a wire. Um, we just went out and got like 99 pence uh, hair scrunchies and rigged those up into a little, um, is that five? Okay. Uh, into a little uh, test rig. And then as we get more and more developed, we're starting to do things like build test rigs. I mentioned those plastic strips inside. They've all been tested. Um, something which I could talk about very briefly at the end is, is the temperature. There's a big worry with this project. It's not very well ventilated. That one is actually a sort of pre-production prototype. Um, the rig over there, which that looks like a, a cylindrical, black cylindrical, that's actually a, a, uh, got a thermocouple in it. So we've done things like test the temperature. Um, it's actually by about half, de half a degree, which isn't great, uh, outperforming one of the previous products which is on the market. Um, we're also concerned quite a lot about pressure on the throat. People were talking about choking earlier on. Um, we've developed some uh, subtle, I'm not sure if that version's got on it, but some subtle stitching like which helps to relieve pressure actually on the throat for the swallowing reflux. Um, Again, this is much more the kind of mechanical design engineering part, but then understanding how these various support elements will behave once they're actually attached to, uh, attached to, the, to, to, to the snood. I'll skip over this one because it's just about mechanics. Um, it's important mechanics, but understanding where the center of mass is and all those kinds of issues. Something else we can do in the lab for living, we have a motion capture suite, which um, a really important part we can attach nodes uh, to people and they record and it's turned into data. We built these various equipment, pieces of equipment, going up steps, going to the toilet, using a laptop computer, opening cupboard doors. And we analyzed how people actually move and use these things. And it's really simple things like that set of steps. I never, I never would have imagined that if you're climbing a set of steps, whether you know it or not, you look at your feet. If you've got a rigid orthosis on, you want to go up a set of steps, you can't look down. So it's just building up a building up enough knowledge to be able to build in the functionality that we, we uh, thought we needed. So uh, second to last slide, this. Um, where are we are now? So we think we've got a product which has USPs. We're talking to manufacturers about getting this into the market. Um, we're talking about having a su support with movement. We're talking about something which is customizable to the patient. If someone has a, a particular um, uh, over to the left or to the right. We can put more support on or less support on so we can customise. We can do, uh, that's the asymmetric part, sorry, but it's also customisable to the shape of the patient because they're all different shapes and sizes. Um, and um, we're also very conscious that this has to be designed to be used. We don't want to design something which is going to cost a fortune, um, which is why it's kind of like it is. It's cheap tooling, cheap materials. Um, and as the disease progresses, you can adapt, you can continue to modify this to be able to um, make it meet your needs. So, also applications, a list of um, potential applications, but there are improvements which we want to address in the next uh, phase. We're talking with the manufacturer, um, as a shorter version. We are investigating side opening because we know that reach is an issue. Um, ventilation, we're still searching for materials and wicking, taking away moisture from, from the skin. So my uh, closing uh, message is when um, often uh, if you're an OT and you're working and you pick up a piece of design and you say, why did they do that? It's always like they. Why, why have they done this? Why didn't they do this? Well, the they, it's us. And if we can work together, then we can help solve more problems. Um, the other thing is, is getting Because we often see people turn up with designs to things, and they're not, because they think that they're the solution, but they, um, they're often just highlighting the question. And it's good to be able to work backwards and find out more about what the question is. So um, on behalf of the team, which is extensive, these three uglies here are my colleagues, um, 
Dr. Joe Langley, Andrew Stanton, who's, who's the RA on the project, design RA, and Alistair Yoxall, who's not officially part of the project, but has helped us a lot with a lot of this work. Um, and all the partners, and especially the users who, who have helped. So that's me. Sorry. Thank you.